bring the rain conditions will, will change my God because it's your rain it's your spirit we pray for rain and we hope for rain because the reality is nothing grows without rain How many of you have somebody, a good friend or somebody in your family who thinks basically everything I said today is a bunch of crap? I do. <laughs> yes. Father, thank you for this morning. mission trip did a seminar in Spanish and uh, so we met I just want to know what you what you've seen what you've experienced and what you attribute it to uh, we have had an unprecedented back-to-back -back amount of uh, droughts now it is unusual as the drought has been in the last three years just prior to that we had a, a segment of time that was unusually wet honestly in my opinion it's just a cycle it's the way that it is I'm not the authority to say that global warming is a problem or it's not. You just simply have to look at that and say, how can you be that sure? How can you be that sure? <laughs> I mean, before we jump on some bandwagon and say it's humans that are causing change and change is what's causing something like the drought, we have to say, are humans causing climate change? We've had climate changes in the past because of natural causes. We've had natural cycles. We've had volcanic eruptions, we've had changes in energy from the sun. But right now, if our temperature were being controlled by natural factors, we'd actually be getting cooler. In fact, we'd be heading into the next ice age. But then the next question is, well, did climate change cause the drought? And that's the question everybody always asks. Mm -hmm. And my answer to that is no. Because if you look at the weather in West Texas, it is extremely variable, just like Curtis said. What we have also seen, though, is that our heavy rainfall events have started to get more frequent with longer dry periods in between. And we also see that when we get like a normal drought, but the, it's a lot hotter because of the increases in temperature, then the soil moisture dries out quicker. And so the, the normal drought can actually be stronger because it's warmer. So if I'm understanding you right, then basically it's like a pendulum that's been swinging a little bit, yeah. but now we're seeing the pendulum swing more. It's not about global warming as much as it is about more extreme extremes. Exactly. Climate change is driving more extreme extremes. I don't doubt any of the, the information that they've collected. I know this girl pretty good. She does her homework. <laughs> she does. But I don't know <laughs> everybody else out there. Mm -hmm. And I don't automatically accept what they tell me is fact. He's where do you scientist. where do you interface yeah. with the climate argument? Oh, where, who from. do you hear it from, and how does it how is it presented to you? The media yeah. on news stories and whatnot. And so it's being filtered through a filter which you may not trust. That's that's exactly mm -hmm. what my yeah. concerns are. Uh -huh. I don't think the climate mm -hmm. change argument is benefited by its chief representative being Al Gore. Your radar goes up that this is this is politically driven with an agenda behind it. So consequently, the baby gets thrown out with the bathwater, exactly. and anything that potentially could have been good for people like myself, the defense mechanism goes up, and you start watching your hip pocket, and you get scared. But I have concern uh, when I hear that, you know, speaking to someone smart, follow an argument, listen to facts, and says, oh, wait a minute, I don't like the speaker. I don't, I've got to throw the whole thing out. Like you said, the whole thing takes a bath now, and now I'm going, what do you really have Well, to trust is truly compromised at that point. In the scientific world, mm -hmm. there's enough debate on the other side that it does make a layperson like myself go, well, now team A is saying this and team B is saying this, but in the sure, meantime. Sure. Well, here, here's the thing that I would just say, though. There's been a concerted effort to make people believe that there's a huge debate in the science. And that it's 50-50. Exactly. I think that the average Joe w sitting in your situation has been given the impression that there's one Catherine with her expertise that says it's happening mm -hmm. and another Catherine with uh, the same her, expertise, the same right. expertise it's, yeah. it's not. saying that it's not That's happening. That's right. not the case. Mm -hmm. So just kind of ballpark, what, what percentage would you think is yes versus no, humans versus not humans? I would say probably 
70-30 in favor of, of climate heating? It's actually 97. Really? Yes. 97% yes. of scientists are saying the same thing. I'll stand, based on 97%, then I have no problem saying, okay, this, this is happening to one degree or another. Uh, again, that's not, mm -hmm. I, I'm not wanting to question it my whole life. You know, I get right. tired of it too. Right. But I don't want us to throw darts at the solution. If you ask me what the number one issue is for everybody in this country who doesn't think climate change is real or doesn't want to do anything about it, I think it's that we're scared of the solutions, because we are. So, you know, you know, notice where we're at in this conversation. I mean, I, I've sensed a shift. She says 97% of scientists say this. He says then he's open to that being possibly true. But then the second concern comes in of policy. What I'm saying here is we've got a microcosm of what could be done in a better way. If we could duplicate and replicate this talk over and over and over and over again. Yeah. There's been no no violence here today. There's been no Day's angry words. Yeah. <laughs> On mean, the way out. Done, not done yet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 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 Yeah.